Hello students, I am here with yet another video on Nomenclature of Elements with Z value greater than 100. This is following the IUPAC Nomenclature. For doing the IUPAC Nomenclature, one should know what are the prefixes that are used. Okay, so we will just learn what are the prefixes used. So if the number is 0, we have the prefix nil. Then if it is 1, we have the prefix un. 2, it is by. 3, it is tri. So 4, you find it is special, which is called quad. 5, as learned earlier, it is pen. 6, it is hex. 7, we learned it as hept. Here it is sept. Eight, it is opt. Nine, we have learned it as non, but here it is n. So what are the differences here? Only when you come across the number four, it has the prefix quad, then Seven, it is sept and nine, it is n. After learning the prefixes, we should know how to end the name. And so suffix is given always as I, U, M. So we shall begin naming the elements. We begin with Z value 100. When Z value is 100, the first numeral here is 1. So it should begin with UN. Then next is nil. So NIL. 0 means again nil. And what did we learn? You should end with IUM. So what will be the name of the element with Z value 100? It is Unnil nilium and the symbol goes like the first letter of each prefix un nil nil so the symbol is u n l begin with a capital letter and followed by small letters now we shall name the element with z value 101 what is the symbol? What will be the name of it? So we begin with un, nil, un, ium. So what will be the name? We will try learning the symbol for it. U, N, U. So it will be U, N, U. So this is the element unnil unium. Now, suppose if it is z is equal to 104, what will be the name for the element? It will be unnil quad ium. So it is unnil quadium. So what will be the symbol for it? Symbol will be U N Q. Hope it is clear. So tell me what will be the naming for 119? 119. The naming would be Un Un Nium. Hope it is clear. Un, un, enium. Symbol will be U, U, E. U, U, E. Now we shall be learning the trends in the modern periodic table. The modern periodic table consists of seven different periods and 18 groups. So the long form 
will have the elements arranged in the increasing order of the atomic numbers. So we shall see what are the trends in the modern periodic table. The modern periodic table consists of four main blocks. They are S block, P block, D block and F block. And this classification is based on writing the electronic configuration. If the valence electron enters the S orbital, it belongs to S block. If it enters the P orbital, it belongs to P block and so on. Likewise, we have four main blocks in the periodic table. They are S block, D block, P block and F block. Here, you find that group 1 and 2 belong to S block. Group 3 to 12 belong to D block. They are also known as transitional elements. Group 13 to 18, they belong to P block. And group in between 3 and 4, you find 14 elements are arranged after the element lanthanum and 14 elements after the element actinium. In the 6th period and the 7th period, they belong to what is called F block. They are also known as inner transition elements. The main trends in modern periodic table. First, we shall see the atomic or ionic radii. This gives an idea about the size of the atoms. We have learned that there are seven periods and 18 groups in the modern periodic table. Now, what will happen to the sizes when we move across a period and down a group? That is what we are going to learn. Take the case with the first group elements. First group elements, the starting element is lithium. Then comes sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Lithium is atomic number 3. So the configuration will be 1s2, 2s1. Sodium is 11. So the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Potassium is 19. So the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. The next one will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, then 3d10, then 4p6 and 5s1. So this keeps on increasing. So what do you find in common here? You find that the outermost configuration will have S1 and so it belongs to S block. So what happens when we are moving down the group? As we move down the group, the number of shells and subshells keeps on increasing. So when, with increasing atomic number, the number of electrons as well as protons increases. So when the number of electrons increases, it has to be accommodated in different shells and subshells. As a result, you find that as we move down the group, the size of the atom keeps on increasing. When we move down the group, what all changes happen? The atomic number increases. Number of protons increases. Nuclear charge will increase. When nuclear charge increases, evidently the pull should also increase. 
but here the electrons are also increasing electrons will be entering the different subshells as a result the size of the atom keeps on increasing so what all things happens when we move down the group as we move down the group the atomic number increases the number of protons and electrons increases nuclear charge increases but here the number of shells are also increasing the inner electrons increases as a result you find that shielding effect or screening effect also keeps on increasing with the result what happens is the valence electron will not feel the effect of the nucleus pull the increased size of the nucleus will make the nuclear charge increase but the nuclear charge is not felt by the outermost electrons due to the intervening inner shells so these shells are effectively covering the nucleus with the result the outermost electrons are not feeling the effect with the result the size keeps on increasing so what all happens when we are moving down the group when we check the sizes you find the size keeps on increasing why the size increases because when we move down the group the size of the atom keeps on increasing why does it increase that is a question so here you find that atomic number increases nuclear charge increases the screening effect or the shielding effect also increases with the result the valence electrons will not have the feel from the growing nucleus with the result you find that the outermost electron will be far away from the nucleus or the size keeps on increasing now we shall see what happens to the sizes as we move across a period so we find that in the first period there are two different elements hydrogen placed in the first group and helium placed in the 18th group so here you find that as we move across what will happen atomic number increases what is the configuration here it is 1 minus 1 this case it is 1 minus 2 is the number of shells increasing here no the number of shells remain the same nuclear charge is increasing pull will be increasing when pull is increasing and the shells are remaining the same to find that the nucleus will have more effect towards the outermost shell as a result the size keeps on decreasing now we have the second period second period you have lithium beryllium this is in the second group then we have boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and finally neon so boron belongs to the 13th group carbon 14th group nitrogen 15th group oxygen 16th group 17th we have the halogen and 18th we have neon so what will be the configuration here you find that this lithium is having the configuration helium 2s1 this is helium 2s2 now take the case with boron it is helium 2s2 to p1 what about the case with carbon carbon has the configuration helium 2s2 to p2 what about nitrogen nitrogen has the configuration helium 2s2 to p3 oxygen helium 2s2 to p4 then what about the case with fluorine fluorine has the configuration helium 2s2 to p5 and finally what is neon neon has the configuration helium 2s2 to p6 hope it is clear so what happens when we are moving across you find that 
the atomic number keeps on increasing. This is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So atomic number keeps on increasing. The number of protons increases. Nuclear charge increases. Electrons are in increasing. But the shells are remaining the same. How many shells are there? Only two shells. First shell and second shell. Second shell is having s orbitals and the p orbitals. So as we move across, the p electrons are keeping on increasing. But the shells remain the same. As a result, you find that the nuclear pull is more and more because the nuclear charge is keeping on increasing. When the nuclear charge increases, pull will be more and that is felt by the outermost electrons. And so you find the size keeps on decreasing. So what are happens when we are moving across in a period? You find that the atomic number increases. Nuclear charge increases, the shells remain the same, shielding effect is not appreciable in the case of elements in the same period. So, as a result, the size keeps on decreasing. Coming to the second property, that is ionization enthalpy. We shall see what are the trends in ionization enthalpy. Before moving on to that, what is meant by ionization enthalpy? It is the energy required to remove the valence electron from the atom. Here, we find that as we move down the group, the size of the atom keeps on increasing. That we have learned just now. So, you find that when we are moving down the group, with the increase in size, the valence electron will be far away from the nucleus. As a result, the energy required to remove the electrons is going to decrease considerably. So with the result, you find that when we are moving down the group, ionization enthalpy of the elements keeps on decreasing. Now come to what happens when we are moving across. So we have learned that down, uh, across the uh, period, the size of the atom keeps on decreasing. With the decrease in size, the nuclear charge is increasing across. And as a result, the valence electron will be more bound to the nucleus. With the result, we will have to supply more and more energy in removing the valence electron. With the result, you find that ionization enthalpy will keep on decreasing down the group and it increases across a period. Now we shall just predict what will be the ionization enthalpies for the case with nitrogen and oxygen. Yes. So, what is special about nitrogen? Nitrogen has atomic number 7. So, what will be the configuration here? It is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So, if you just draw the configuration here, you have 2s orbitals. This is 1s2, 2s2 and 2p it will be three electrons. Take the case of oxygen. Oxygen is atomic number eight. Configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So the configuration will draw like 1s2, 2s2, 2p, it will be four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, P, 4. So what is special about these two configurations? Take the case with nitrogen. Nitrogen is having 
three electrons in the p orbital. We know that two p orbitals are d0. Hydrogen has a configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Here, if when we check the configuration of nitrogen and oxygen, what do you find in special about nitrogen? Here you find that there are three electrons in the degenerate p orbitals. And we have learned that degenerate orbitals, if they are half filled or fully filled, they are having extra stability. So then you find that the 2p3 configuration is considerably stable compared to 2p4. So what can you predict about the ionization enthalpies? Here this is having extra stability means we will have to supply more energy in removing the valence electron from nitrogen compared to that of oxygen. So here you find that ionization enthalpy is written as delta Hi. Delta Hi of nitrogen is much more compared to delta Hi of oxygen. The reason being extra stability of half filled orbitals. We shall resume the trends in the uh, periodic table in the next video. Thank you.